it's nowhere near as rough. It took forever to get rid of the scratch pattern. Hey there. These have become all the rage in woodworking, and uh, I've known about them for a little while, but I've been a pretty hefty Festool fan, and I've been fairly happy and pleased with the results that I get from Festool Granat sandpaper. So with all of the Granat that I had on hand, I decided I'd let these just sort of sit out there in the ether a bit. But there is one thing that I would criticize the Granat sandpaper for. It's got a great finish capability, but removal is only okay. So, knowing about all the removal claims made with these mesh sandpaper discs, especially from 3M, I decided I would give them a shot. So here's what I used as my test subject for these new sanding discs. We've got several clocks in different stages of completeness here. 12, 12 inch clocks, about five state shaped clocks, and because it didn't fit on the table, this one 24 inch clock, all sanded with the 3M extract mesh sand disks using 80 grit, 120 grit, and then 180 grit, which is how I've usually done Festool Granat. Here's what I discovered. The removal claims made for these sanding disks is no joke. They plowed through my work pieces making short work of the sanding process. The other thing that I discovered is that it's virtually impossible to leave swirl marks with these disks. I don't really know what it is, but I even tried to do some things that commonly led to swirl marks with the Festool sandpaper, and I got nothing. On somewhat softer wood, like cherry, it was impossible to pick out any sort of blemish made by these. And on harder, denser wood, like sugar maple, on lower grits, maybe there was something I noticed, but it was quickly removed at higher grits. I should also mention that for the entire sanding time, on all of those work pieces, the 12, 12 inch clocks, the state clocks, and the 124 inch clock, I used one disc, just one, for each grit the entire time. It never wore out, I never had to change it. Now, a couple of things to note. Uh, this is particularly specific to Festool users. There may be some analogs with some other sanders out there, so I would spend some time figuring it out. You do need to use these little intermediate pads on Festool sanders, or you really should, because the discs themselves, they heat up a bit, and they will tend to cause some damage to the hook-and-loop design of the pads. So where you normally have the pad that goes on the bottom of the sander, you want this as well as a piece in between that the sanding disc or sanding net then attaches to. This is how you should use it on a Festool sander, and as I said, there are probably other sanders that have intermediate pads like this, and that would be advisable to use when using these disc sanders. The other thing about using these intermediate pads with these disc sanders that I really liked in terms of convenience of swapping things out, I, for whatever reason, struggle at times to get the holes on the regular Festool sandpaper lined up correctly with these discs. I'll get a couple looking pretty good, and then I look at the other, other edge of the, the disc, and it, it's not lined up very well at all. So I have to take it off, put it back on. It's not a big deal, but it takes a little bit of extra effort to get things lined up right. When you use these intermediate pads with these net sanders, all you have to do is line these holes up once, and provided you don't pull this intermediate pad off the main sanding pad when you pull the net sander off, you just throw this on however, it doesn't matter because there's several little holes in this that uh, air flows through and then sawdust flows through. I did notice, however, that dust collection with the Festool sanders using these sanding discs was not as great as dust collection that I get when using traditional Festool sandpaper. Now, turning the power of the dust extractor up definitely helped a lot to facilitate better dust collection, and I do know that Festool has highly recommended using lower power on the dust extractor to prevent swirl marks, but like I said, it's kind of impossible to create swirl marks with these sanding discs, so Turn the dust extractor up, full blast, it worked just fine. No problems on my end when I sanded through all those work pieces that you just saw. Now, in the interest of seeing, being, believing, I'm gonna do a little test here that I did not prep for at all, so we're gonna see what happens live. We're going to test Festool Granat 40 grit sandpaper. This is extremely aggressive. Against the 3M Extract 80 grit, I don't happen to have a uh, 40 grit uh, 3M, I don't think they make a 40 grit actually, but I do happen to have 40 grit 
Granat, so I figured this would be a great way to compare what I think is the most aggressive, or at least one of the most aggressive, sanding options in the Festool Granat regular sandpaper lineup against the sort of basic kind of where we start aggressiveness on the 3M side. We're going to run it on this, actually two, I've got two different boards we're going to use, on two different boards of yellow birch. This came from the same board, so it's basically the same, I just cut it in half. And we're going to do it this way. We're going to run the 40 grit Granat on the RO150 highest speed setting in Rotex mode because that should be the fastest removal capabilities of this sander with this sandpaper. And then we're going to take the 80 grit and we're going to use it on an ETS EC 153 millimeter travel. So this is the light touch sander from Festool. We're going to use it again with the 80 grit from Theory M. And we're going to see which one removes pencil marks on yellow birch, which is a moderately hard hardwood, faster. So there you go. There was not much of a time difference between those two. And this is a bit of a ridiculous test because we're using a very aggressive sandpaper with a very aggressive sandpa sanding mode against a moderately aggressive sandpaper with a very not aggressive sander in the process. And um, as I look at this now, I notice that the board that I used for the 3M paper, it's a little bit bigger than the board that I used for the, the Rotex. The other thing that will be virtually impossible to see on camera, though I'll try, um, the board that was sanded with the Rotex is very, very scratched up. It's very rough. It is very noticeably got some scratch patterns in it that will take some time to get rid of. The uh, the 3M paper, or the 3M board, it's. It's not ready to be finished, but it's nowhere near as rough. And we got this done in almost the same amount of time as this one. So the 3M paper is excellent at fast removal. So take this information and do with it what you want. But I will tell you that the claims that the 3M extract paper's removal capabilities are not overstated by any any stretch of the imagination. They are extraordinarily good. You know, just for kicks, I kind of decided, what would it take to sand down this very rough board now that I've gone over it with the 40 grit granat on the Rotex? And uh, I'm gonna try that out because in the past, sanding after I would do something like 40 grit sandpaper, which admittedly I didn't do a lot, but I did from time to time, it took forever to get rid of the scratch pattern that was, was left behind. So I'm gonna try it right now with this. So it definitely went much faster than if I were just going to use Festool Granat paper going up to maybe 60 or 80 grit at this point and then moving forward from there. Um, it's still a little rougher than the original board just sanded with the, the 80 grit 3M. So um, kind of eliminates the need or purpose to use that aggressive a sandpaper period, uh, I probably could have gotten it done much faster if I had used the Rotex to do it as well. Okay, so admittedly when I originally did that sanding test, I didn't have a way to really closely measure just how much time it took to sand each piece with different sandpaper, different sander. So I went back to the video footage and I used that to figure out the precise time that it took to sand each piece, to sand away the pencil marks for each piece. 
And here's what it came down to. The Rotex with the 40 grit granat took 33.6 seconds. The ETS EC with the 80 grit Cubitron 2 took 54.3 seconds. So the Rotex with the more aggressive sandpaper did beat it by about 20.7 seconds or about 21 seconds, which is faster. And we may be able to make the claim that over a long enough period of time of a whole bunch of different sanding, that could become a much more significant difference in terms of sanding time. But I did go back and I did sand out this board with the Cubitron uh, sandpaper, which was kind of my analog for growing up in, in grits to get to the same place that the original Cubitron board was at after we got done 54.3 seconds later. It took a minute and a half to get rid of the really rough sanding swirl marks that were put in this board from this sander with this sandpaper. That obviously totally eliminates that 21-ish second advantage that the original Festool Granat sandpaper had over the Cubitron sandpaper. And as I already mentioned, we're using a very aggressive sandpaper in a very aggressive sanding mode with a moderately aggressive sandpaper in what is more or less a finishing sander. And we're getting results that aren't that far apart, and it speaks specifically to just how great this paper works. So at least from the perspective of initial sanding to start the process and remove a bunch of material, there's a lot of argument to be made for this sandpaper. So the sanding discs are pretty great. They make sanding a whole lot less of a chore because it plows through material much faster than traditional sandpaper does, at least Festool Granat. Does this mean I'm a convert and I'm going to throw away all of my Festool paper? No. There is one thing that I did discover I do not like about these sanding discs. And this may be specific to 3M. I didn't test any other sanding net uh, abrasives, and there are some other brands out there that are regarded as slightly higher end, so they may not have this problem. But I will tell you the finish quality that I got from these sanding discs was less impressive. I prefer what I get out of the Festool Granat finish a whole lot more than what I get from these sanding discs. So the solution is simple. I'm going to use lower grit sanding nets with 3M to get through material quickly. Then I'll use higher grit, 180 for example, granat to do my final sanding and away I go. That works very well. In fact, that's exactly what I ended up doing with the majority of those clocks that you just saw because I learned pretty quickly in the process that I was not at all pleased with the finish quality at a higher grit for these sanding discs. So as a piece of recommendation for me, buy these in lower grits like 80 grit, 120 grit, but once you step into something like 180 grit, and I don't really sand bare wood much higher than that as a general rule, that's where I would use the pricier granat because I like the finish quality a whole lot better. So yeah, um, the 3M extract stuff is amazing at material removal. Not amazing necessarily at finish quality, but first couple of sandings, totally go for it. Definitely worth it, and not a very expensive sandpaper either. So um, it gets my thumbs up, that's for sure. Thanks for watching.